means, uh, I should say this technology isn't a new technology. It's new in, in terms of using it for vaccines, but uh, the mRNA, mRNA technology has been used uh, in breast cancer treatments. It's very well tested. It's very safe and, and proven. Um, one of the questions uh, that is frequently asked, uh, especially in the convention center, is how similar is the flu vaccine in terms of how it is produced compared to this vaccine? Uh, a lot of people have very, um, very good questions about, about those things. In general, uh, most vaccines are uh, attenuated viruses, which are just weakened viruses of the actual live virus. This isn't the situation for this particular um, type of technology. It is just um, made in a laboratory. It is not in any way uh, using part of the, uh, the actual virus. Um, because this kind of snuck up on us uh, very quickly, uh, Moderna, uh, the company uh, Moderna essentially, you know, started saying, well, let me see if we can figure out how to use this mRNA technology to treat uh, the coronavirus. And, um, and then they put in their application um, with, uh, with the FDA and it, it got approved. Uh, so that's essentially how we, we, we've gotten these mRNA vaccines uh, to uh, get on the market so quickly. Uh, again, very tested, um, very proven, um, very proven science. So I like to start. With, um, I like to start with. I have an echo here. Nola just walked in. So the Oregon Health Authority essentially is in charge of how um, the vaccines are distributed um, in the state to different. Uh, health organizations, to hospitals, to long-term long -term care facilities. This, uh, this data is, I think this is dated on Thursday. I wanted to have the date on here, but I just pulled it up uh, for Thursday. And essentially what it's showing you uh, is how many people have actually been impacted by the virus in the state of Oregon and uh, those who have actually perished um, um, because of the virus. And I have it based upon the age group and the race. Uh, it's interesting to note, you know, if you're just looking, if you're a data person, you look at the 20 to 29 age group and you notice that population is the population who's most been um, affected. The, that's the population uh, that, has, uh, that has probably been the super spreaders also uh, in the state and probably throughout the world. Uh, those 20 to 29 year old people who think they can survive anything, they, you know, the Superman and Wonder Woman and, and all of those complexes uh, that they can handle anything. But they're the ones that we, that come in contact with those younger kids and they come in contact also with our elderly population. Of note also, if you look in the race section per percentage of population, Pacific Islander and American Native American Indians, uh, the percentage of, of, the, of that population that is actually uh, infected uh, with COVID is, is much, much higher than all of the other uh, races. And, um, you know, as, as time goes on, I, I'm sure they'll continue to do studies as to um, multi-generational housing, uh, you know, migrant workers or what situation, why is it that this particular sect of the population, percentage of the population um, is being infected at a much higher rate than, than, other, than, uh, than, those, other, um, than those other races. Um, so if you're trying to figure out when you will be able to get the vaccine, uh, again, the Oregon Health Authority's website would be the place you would, you would go. Of course, the news organizations will be sharing that information. So right now we are, uh, we are in phase 1B. Um, and this phase 1B had an, uh, you know, it was updated uh, when the governor decided to include child care providers uh, when that wasn't something that was decided back in December. So um, uh, 
some, they, they ended up getting in the 1B group one area. And then as you can see here, group two began uh, this past week and group three, 70, uh, group two is uh, 80 years and older. And then group three um, is gonna start on Monday uh, with people 75 and older. Um, hot off the presses, the last three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Oregon Convention Center, uh, PDX Airport, and all of the drive-through um, vaccine centers have been closed. So those patients are going to be, those patients in the last three days, including tomorrow, who, uh, who where those clinics have been closed, they will need to be rescheduled. So of course, this is gonna push everything back. In general, at the Oregon Convention Center, uh, we're vaccinating somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 people uh, a day. So that's an, over 10,000 people that will need to be scheduled pretty quickly. Some of those people are actually you know, getting their second dose. Uh, so they need to be prioritized um, above others uh, for that reason. So um, the next week or so is gonna be pretty messy in terms of how we figure out how we're gonna reschedule people and then how we're going to open up more uh, scheduling appointments for those particular age groups. But um, the good news is uh, we have vaccine. Uh, we, are, we are confident that those patients that are receiving, I shouldn't say confident, I, we know that those patients that are receiving their first dose we are allocating all of the vaccines for those first dose people so that they can guarantee, that we can guarantee that they get their second dose. So those of you who have some concerns about well, whether we'll, will we run out of vaccine, um, it, Oregon has decided that if, if, if you got 10,000 doses from, uh, from the government that you would allocate uh, 5,000 for 5,000 people and essentially you would hold the other 5,000 for the second dose so that we're not just dosing 10,000 people and fingers crossed that we would get the other 10,000, uh, the other 10,000 doses to do their second dose. When it is your time to get your vaccine, you're going to go to this covidvaccine.oregon.gov Again, you'll also listen to uh, the news organizations, um, Albertsons, Costco, um, and Safeway just announced this week that they opened up some, some schedules, uh, uh, some appointments. So you just wanna keep your ears open, but no matter who you get your vaccine from, you should essentially be in one of these groups. Um, that's how they are going to prioritize uh, who should be vaccinated and who sh well, the timing of who should be vaccinated, of those people who should be vaccinated. If you're going to the Oregon Health Authority's website, there's this thing that you might have heard in the news. It's called the bot. It's a robot. Uh, it essentially, it is a tool that helps guide you and, and helps you figure out if you are eligible to get your vaccine at this time. It's pretty user-friendly. Um, and I can say that as a person who's comfortable with a computer, but if you're not comfortable with a computer, on the webpage, there is also a phone number that you can call. Uh, just recently over this week, the governor uh, slated uh, more National Guard to help with that phone line because it was a mess. They were having people hold for uh, God knows how long. I think it was a few hours, but that has improved. Uh, but again, if you're looking to be vaccinated pretty much in the next week or two, just be mindful with the, with the, with the snow event that we had, things are going to go a lot slower. Um, particularly where I am working, I'm working at the Oregon Convention Center and the Oregon Convention Center is the largest vaccination center uh, in, the, uh, in the state at this point. Um, and it's a collaboration of the four largest health systems in the area. So that's uh, Kaiser Permanente, Legacy, OHSU, and Providence. And um, things are working really, things are going really well. Uh, in terms of their organization, in terms of how they're working together. Um, when you go to the convention center, you won't, if you're a Kaiser patient, you won't be seen by a Kaiser practitioner. You'll just be seen by a vaccinator who could be you know, from any one of those organizations or the National Guard or a retired physician or, 
or whatever. But uh, in terms of sharing resources, uh, this was the best way they figured how they, they were trying to figure out what was the best way to to vaccinate a large number of people with the resources that they had. And the governor uh, spoke to these organizations and, and this is what they came up with. So All for Oregon is uh, the name of this collaboration. Uh, we're going to be getting some fancy t-shirts is what I'm understanding. Uh, uh, next week so that we can start wearing our specific uh, clothing. So uh, if you're going to the convention center to get your vaccine, uh, I wanted to kind of give you a virtual tour of what it would look like. So uh, here's that tour. Hello Ainsworth family and friends. Uh, this is Marlon, your neighborhood pharmacist. I am going to give you a brief uh, virtual tour of what it's going to look like for you when you join uh, join me and others at the Oregon Convention Center to get your vaccine. Uh, so we are driving right now to the convention center. So if you're going to get your vaccine at the convention center and it's your time uh, to be vaccinated, you will be getting it in the Oregon Convention Center right now. Uh, they are, we are giving vaccines in uh, the conference rooms, but it's going to be moved to the exhibit center pretty soon. So, of course, you see the convention center. Um, you'll be making a turn on, uh, what street is this? You'll be making a turn on Northeast Lloyd to get to the parking structure. Uh, there, uh, there's enough parking. There haven't been uh, complaints of parking, which is really good. Um, and there are also lots of wheelchairs for those who, uh, who have mobility issues. But making that turn onto Lloyd and we'll be going into the parking structure uh, to, to get into the building. At the beginning of the parking structure, there will be someone who's, who will ask, you know, if you have an appointment uh, because at this time there are no walk-ins uh, vaccination times everything is appointment only so we are entering at this moment and you can see the sign here it says COVID-19 vaccination site entrance uh, if people ask they would normally will ask for your uh, appointment time or your QR code if you got the QR code uh, from uh, the bot. We will pause now until we get into the building. Hello Ainsworth. So that was one of the videos and I have a couple of more to share. So once you fill out your worksheet, you will then get in another line. Uh, this line. So I am going to pause this one because yeah, that, we can't we can't see it, Marlon. You can't see it. No. Could you see the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're not sharing the screen anymore. Understood. Thank you. Can you see this document download screen? Nope. All right. We'll get it together. From the registration area, they're going to ask for you to have. Uh, we can hear you, but we can't see anything. Or sure. I mean, we can hear the video playing. Okay. How's that? Yep, we can see so it. So in the registration area, they're going to ask for you to have um, your appointment or something to verify that you actually have an appointment and you should be in the building at this time. So that's the first section you'll come into is registration. So again, you want to make sure that you have your appointment information, 
uh, pulled up on your phone already. All right. And we cannot see the screen anymore. Gotcha. Okay. Are we ready? You should be able to see to get your registration. You're going to receive this yep. uh, worksheet and essentially you're going to fill out the first sheet, uh, the first, uh, the first couple of sections of the sheet. Essentially, it gives you your demographical information and it also talks about if you have any signs or symptoms uh, and if it's your first or second dose. If you get your registration, you're going to receive this uh, worksheet. So once you fill out your you worksheet, strain? you will then get in another line. Uh, this line is between the greeting station where you receive your worksheet and uh, the actual registration station where they actually check you in, pull you up in the computer. Um, there are escalators, there are stairs, and there are lots, like I mentioned, there are lots of wheelchairs that you're able to use if there is some mobility issues. So something you wouldn't have to worry about. So right after registration, then you will be in the vaccination line. Um, after you get out of line for your vaccination. I thought about um, all the people that I saw, so I, I cut it off just because patient privacy, I didn't wanna, you know, I thought about that, but any, at any rate. Um, so that essentially is what it's going to look like. You're gonna go from one line to another line to another line, uh, uh, the entire process, if we are on schedule, it's going to take you about probably about 50 minutes to an hour. If we are behind, it may be up to two hours from the point of where you park and where you get in your line and get into the line before we take care of you. It is not a perfect process in any way, but um, it is definitely um, um, a heavy lift to, to kind of do this work. Uh, can you all see the screen? Hello? Yes. Yeah, we okay. can see it. Yes. Thank you. All right, so lots of questions about how safe the vaccines uh, are. The only contraindication to the vaccine is an anaphylactic reaction, which is this severe reaction, primarily with swelling of the lips, the tongue, something that uh, swelling of the of uh, the throat where you have difficulty breathing. Um, I like this. This is something that we have in our employee health section. So I took a picture of it and stole it. Uh, stole it. Know the facts. Any licensed vaccine has been rigorously tested. It is continuously monitored to make sure it is safe and effective for you and your family. In general, when vaccines are approved, uh, they are, of course, um, studied for many, many years, unlike what we've done in the last year with these two vaccines. But in general, 95% of vaccines uh, will show some type of severe reaction within the first two months uh, of people being vaccinated. And now that we have over eight months of data, we can be pretty sure that the only reason you would be having a severe reaction to the vaccine is if you're allergic to one of the components in the vaccine, which we would pretty much figure out on that first dose. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention, I'm sorry, in the once you get your vaccine, uh, you're required to be observed for about 15 minutes if you are a uh, quote unquote normal uh, reaction person with a vaccine. If you've had some type of abnormal reaction with the vaccine, um, then we ask you to stick around for 30 minutes. We have physicians there, we have EMTs, we have nurses, we have everything to take care of you just in case something happens. But um, these vaccines are very safe. And again, in general, the majority of people would have had a reaction within two months of getting a vaccine. And now we're over, you know, we're over eight months of actual uh, data. So the side effects. Um, Side effects are primarily when you're getting a needle in your arm, 
uh, your body tends not to like that. And we tend not to like that as, as humans, uh, just the fear of having a needle in your arm. So uh, that's always going to be um, the first hurdle is the, the pain at the injection site. It does normally resolve um, pretty quickly. One of the recommendations uh, that I always share with people when they're getting vaccinated is to avoid getting vaccinated in the arm that you're going to, that you normally sleep on. So if you sleep on your left side, you don't want to get a vaccine on your, in your left arm. You, you may want to do that in your right arm. Um, most people are getting severe side effects with the second dose because that is essentially uh, the booster dose of the vaccine. And those, those side effects occur for most people within six to 12 hours of uh, receiving the first or the second dose for that matter. Uh, but the second dose, it is really horrible. I wanna be completely transparent and share that that second dose for most people, uh, it causes a lot of issues. I have about 20 employees and it was about 16 of them called out. Uh, so called out of work when they had to get their second dose. Uh, a couple of them aren't very reliable, but even the reliable ones uh, who called out, uh, they really had some bad side effects. I actually didn't have any side effects for the first or the second dose. I didn't have a fever. I didn't have any kind of reaction. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go to Fred Meyer and actually get the antibody test to just make sure that my immune system kicked in. Uh, God forbid I'm one of those people, that, one of those 5% of people that, that actually uh, didn't respond to the vaccine. So one way you can confirm is you can, you can get an antibody test and see if you actually have antibodies. The antibodies for the vaccine, if you get the vaccine within three months, those antibodies are gonna be extremely high. If you contracted the virus itself uh, and not, uh, if you contracted the virus itself, the vaccine, I'm sorry, the antibodies might be really low depending upon how long ago you actually were infected. Um, one of them, I love this quote here, uh, side effects, why are there never any good side effects? Just once I'd like to read a medication bottle and see the side effect as it may cause extreme awesomeness. Uh, again, that second dose and even, even in the first dose, if you get those side effects, that's, that's a great thing. That means that your body is actually responding to the vaccine, which is a good thing, is your body is prepping to make those antibodies uh, to get you to fight off um, the virus. So why vaccinate? This is a, number, this is a question pharmacists deal with uh, pretty much all the time in community settings. Uh, well, we, we vaccinate to protect ourselves, but essentially we vaccinate to protect the community. We vaccinate to protect the world. We, we vaccinate to protect our families. Um, so this herd, this discussion, everyone's heard of this herd immunity. Um, CDC sometimes calls it population immunity. Um, they, uh, Dr. Fauci, our good friend, Dr. Fauci, he's, he has, he's, He's not locked down a percentage, but he's given a huge range of 70 to 85% of the population will need to be vaccinated so that we can then get to this herd immunity. But I think we just don't know, right? We just don't know. There are many things that are going on. Uh, the variants that are going on, going on across the globe is also going to um, dictate how, how quickly we can get to herd immunity. Um, Natural infection may not protect you from a repeat infection. Uh, so that essentially means is a patient, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, yeah, a patient who has actually uh, contracted COVID, there are, there are no studies to, that suggest at this point that if you, uh, if you actually got the virus in, in, in the community or wherever you got the virus, that you would actually not get it again. So there isn't any evidence that you cannot become reinfected. Uh, but we do know that the studies, because of the, the studies with the vaccines, if you, if you do get the vaccine, again, you are reducing your risk of moderate to severe disease, and you're also reducing the risk of hospitalization and, uh, and death, of course, which is, which is important. Uh, both vaccines appear, and I have in a 
in underlined and italics, it appeared to be effective against the new strains. Um, the, the percentages of effectiveness against the new strains are, there are many people, there there's a lot of information out there suggesting that uh, the effectiveness has been reduced. So we know that. We know that it isn't at that 95%, and it's not at that 94.1%. It is reduced. What can we do about it? Nothing. There isn't anything we can do about it at this point. Everything is so new. Um, we can just be patient. We can just see if they can tweak some of the, uh, the chemical structures of, of the vaccine to see if it can uh, boost against the variants. But for right now, we, we just don't know. So I, I won't even try to speculate anything. Uh, and just so we're clear, viral mutations happen all the time. They happen all the time with the flu vaccine. They happen all the time throughout, uh, throughout the globe. So this isn't, some, this isn't anything new. It's just because of the severity of this particular disease that uh, we're hearing more and more about these variants. But again, this isn't anything new in, in virology and in, in infectious disease. It's not, it's not new in any way. So moving forward, we're almost over. You can be through with me talking. Moving forward, uh, vaccines. This is, this is something that um, we get a lot of questions at the convention center about. So now I'm not, so now we're killing the virus. And, and uh, as a science person, you, you're very careful on how you answer, you know, if something's actually killing something, destroying something, getting rid of something. So what we know is that the vaccine only reduces severity of disease. The vaccines only uh, reduce the uh, severity of the disease, and it and it's and it's allowing people to, to to continue to live and function in a way where if we didn't have the vaccines, we'd be losing lives. So yes, um, this is good news, but again, the virus is still running rampant, and the virus will still run rampant. Uh, it's not going to go away. Uh, it'll be with us 20 years from now. Uh, the variants are of concern, um, but again, I won't speculate on what that, uh, you know, what that means in terms of uh, effectiveness against the vaccines, because I just don't know. I just don't know. And if anyone says they know, they're not telling you the truth. Uh, the timeline for going back to normal. So this is another thing that Dr. Fauci is very, the CDC and especially Dr. Fauci, who's a, a, a huge spokes, a spokesperson for the government right now, he's saying fall to winter. And we're saying fall to winter because there are a couple of things that, that they think they'll have in place. They think they'll have enough vaccines produced and vaccines in patients' arms. And they're also suggesting that, you know, upwards of 70% of the population will choose to be vaccinated. And I don't know if that's true. I don't, I wish I knew the answer to that, but I don't know if that's true. I don't know if people are going to um, I don't know if 70% of the population is going to um, uh, get vaccinated, and I definitely don't know if we're going to have enough vaccines to cover uh, second doses for uh, nearly, you know, close to 300 million people. But what I do know is, I know you can help with getting us to herd immunity and getting us back to normal by getting vaccinated. So when it is your time, you want to go ahead and get vaccinated. You want to go ahead and, and know that these vaccines are tried and true and they have been studied and that they are safe and that you should go ahead and get vaccinated. But in the meantime, we must keep on protecting each other. So we still have to wash our hands. We're still going to have to practice um, physical distancing, right? We don't like the word social distancing, but physical distancing. And we're gonna to have to continue to wear our face mask until we are all uh, quote unquote back to normal. So um, with all of that being said, here's some of the sites that I've used to, to, um, to share what I've shared. And I am ready for some questions and comments and discussions uh, for those who, who, who have questions, comments, and, and things they want to uh, talk about. Thank you, Dr. Broussard. 
thank you so much. We thank really you. appreciate all your preparation. And there is a list of, of questions in the chat and I will go through them. And if you if you have after we're done with those, you can add some to the chat if you would, or raise your hand, but we'll take the chat ones first. Okay. Uh, and I won't say who said it, or should I say who asked? I'm fine. Okay. Uh, Peggy West said, I have had an an anaphylactoid reaction to typhoid vaccine as a child. Would it be better to get my vaccination at the convention center rather than a local pharmacy where they might not be able to handle a severe reaction as well? Yeah, Peggy, I would definitely get it at the convention center. We have an EMT that's uh, that's on site. We have physicians there. We have an ambulance right outside. So if there's any concern that, you know, if, if any patient who's had an anaphylactic reaction, anything that required previous hospitalization, uh, you would be better served at a larger place. Not that the staff at, you know, Costco or Walgreens or Safeway wouldn't be able to handle it. They would call 911 just like we would, we would, but you would have, you would have trained staff. And again, if you are getting the vaccine with a known previous history of, um, of, of severe side effects when you've had a shot before, we would ask you to stick around for 30 minutes. So prepare accordingly. You want to make sure that you, you, you can stick around for those extra 30 minutes. That's a great question. Okay, thank you. And then, um, so Dr. Broussard, you are pure of health, so no side effects. That's why you didn't have side effects, apparently. I'll take that, I'll take that. Um, okay, I, I have to wade through some other things. Sure. I, I've heard, whoops, I heard that side effects from the vaccine are less strong with older adults. Is that true? That is true, which is quite interesting, right? Uh, you would think uh, because the virus decimates the, uh, the uh, geriatric population in, in a much severe way, but that is what the studies have shown. They've shown that th that population tends to not have uh, severity, of of severity of side effects because of the vaccine. So yes, true, okay. true. <laughs> Hector th tends to debate on that because he suffered on his second one, but did he? Uh, yeah. Well, he's 18, so there you <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, next question is um, where is Johnson and Johnson vaccine in their process once they are whoops, it moved. Once they are approved, will that speed up the access to vaccine? That's from Linda. Yeah, so Linda, that's a great question. So here are a couple of things that you want to think about. Uh, the other two vaccines, uh, the Johnson and Johnson and the Novatech, I'm, 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 I may be saying the wrong thing. They will be, they will not. It would be unlikely that those vaccines will be in urban centers, and here is why: they don't have the 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 storage requirements that some of the other the <laughs> other two vaccines do. So logistically, right? If you are uh, the governor of the state, or if you are a, a, a medical officer, you have to figure out, well, we have all these people in Pendleton. We have all of these smaller communities. We tend to think of Portland as the center of the universe. Are we, you know, some of us tend to think of Portland as the center of the universe, but we need to get those vaccines to those areas where they, they don't require that negative 70 freezer, right? So I would imagine in terms of logistics that, that those one-shot vaccines will be moved to those very, very um, rural areas where the storage issues won't be in the same, uh, won't cause the same issues that, they, that, that we can deal with in, in the Portland area. Um, that's a best guess. Um, what I, what I would also say is um, if and when, uh, not if, but when those vaccines are on the market and you do have the opportunity to be vaccinated, you will not have a choice on what you get. So that's going to frustrate a lot of people, but you won't have a choice. For example, at the OCC, there are days that we have majority Pfizer and then we have Moderna and we only have Moderna for second dose patients. And as I mentioned earlier, those second dose patients, we've allocated those, vi those um, vials to those patients. So you may want the one shot scenario because say you have a fear of needles and you wanna just not have to do a second shot. 
you may not have a choice. Wherever you go, wherever whatever they have is what they have. And that's what you're going to get. The only thing that you'll have a choice in is making your second appointment. And, and, and of course, that would be with the same vaccine. But you would then have uh, the ability to choose when you would come back in that four day period. But, um, but Linda, in general, the logistics of trying to vaccinate everyone in the state, you want to look at those populations where you can you can have it in just the regular fridge, and not have to um, not have to have that same kind of um, severe storage uh, recommendations. Does that make sense? Thank you. From Judith Petrie, I don't know if you have Washington State information about where to contact, but that might be helpful. Okay, um, I don't, but uh, I can definitely have it by tomorrow, Miss Judy, and we can put it in the chat for church. How's that? And uh, from Dave, a friend went to the convention center and said it was remarkably well organized and efficient. Um, and then Judy, where, when are more pharmacies going to have availability of the vaccine? For example, Walgreens, and you mentioned that. Um, but yeah, that, that happened just this week. Um, Costco, Safeway, uh, Fred Meyer. I didn't hear Walgreens in the mix. Um, they should be, but um, yeah, I think, I think you're gonna start to see it unfold uh, throughout all of the pharmacies, uh, but their ability to, to manage masses of people won't be great because of course the, the physicality of their buildings, uh, they need to have an observation area. You need to have a pharmacist on staff uh, who can actually monitor people or you need to have a nurse who can monitor people or an EMT. So, um, so your best bet in terms of um, if you can get an appointment would be the OCC because this, this is just such a massive um, undertaking that you're, you'll be able to get in and out and uh, very quickly. Okay, and from Kathy, I have visited OHA and signed up for, the, for notification for the vaccine. Is that sufficient to be notified? Um, it's sufficient to be notified, but I think once you get, uh, if you're watching the news and you get, you see that you're you're slated to go ahead and get your vaccine, I would go ahead to the to that web portal on the OHA web page and go ahead and and put your information in the robot and do it again. Um, I think that will make sure that you you're getting your uh, you're getting um, an appointment sooner uh, than later. Okay. Thank okay. you. And then, um, Beverly, Beverly uh, we have a couple more. Uh, please mute yourself. I will mute you. Okay. Um, Beverly has a question. And then Catherine Potter is also working at the convention center. Uh, I haven't seen you, Catherine. You have, we have to try to do it on the same day. So Catherine will have you Jump in when the questions end, okay? You sure. might bring up new questions. Go ahead, Beverly. Okay, so I have two questions. The first one is, is that when you go onto the website and it makes an appointment for you, you go to down to the convention center. What about the other places that people are going, you know, like the drive-through out at the airport? How is that getting scheduled? It's getting scheduled through those organizations. So OHSU is doing the PDX airport. So if oh. you go to their website, you'll be able to, to, to uh, lock in that appointment through them. Uh, Costco, you would need to go to Costco's website and pretty much it's all gonna be the same. It's gonna be this robot, uh, this bot that will walk you through. It'll ask you certain questions, uh, but you will go directly to that organization's website and they'll hook you up. Okay, so my second question is, is once you get the vaccine, you can still get the virus and you can still give the virus, right? Unfortunately, yes. Because I think everybody's thinking that once they get the vaccine, you know, they won't you're be able free. to- You're free. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Beverly. It's um, you, at this point, uh, the data suggests that the vaccine, again, only reduces your risk of, uh, well, it eliminates your risk of death 
and it reduces uh, severe, moderate to severe disease. Okay. But, but it, confirm. yeah, but it also, it also has been shown that you can be a carrier of the virus even once you've been vaccinated, which sucks, right? Because it, it okay. just seems like, well, why is this a vaccine? Why are we calling it a vaccine? It doesn't seem the, the true nature of, of how a vaccine works. And I won't get into the politics of why we call it what we call it, but um, it is a vaccine according to the CDC. Uh, and that's what the, the signs suggest that it works in that way, but it is unique in that you're still able to be contagious and you're still able to be sick when, once you've gotten this vaccine, uh, not because of the vaccine, but because of the contact that you've come in contact with someone who, uh, who was COVID positive. But yeah, so I to, still won't to, have people in my house and I still won't be able to hug everybody. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're still in that same situation uh, where, you know, we have to practice that, that physical distancing. We still have to keep our mask on at least for several more months. Um, in an ideal situation, you know, everyone will get vaccinated in a timely manner and, and we will have enough vaccines for everyone on the planet. So this is, and that's another thing you wanna think about. This isn't a US thing. This isn't an Oregon thing. This is a planet thing. Everyone on the globe needs to do the same thing because as soon as that nice Italian lady comes over uh, to Oregon and you meet her at the flower shop and now all of a sudden, you know, there's this exposure. So it's, it's something that it's a heavy lift. It's a heavy lift. Um, so, but yes, to answer your question, it would not be advisable to let people, even people who've been vaccinated, right, in your home, uh, if if um, at this point in time, it's it's still not advised. Thank you. Okay, sure. Catherine, would you like to share? Well, I am not the expert or the scientist that Dr. Broussard is, but I have been working at the convention center um, a number of days over the last three weeks. And I just wanted to, and I loved your videos, um, but I just wanted to also reassure people around the safety because a lot of people have been concerned. You know, there's so many people, yeah. you know, as we heard, there's between two and 4,000 people every day getting vaccinated plus the hundreds of people working there. Um, but it's a really, really large facility. And when you come in, you come in at one end, and you go to almost the other end through yeah. the whole process. So there's a lot of spacing. There's a lot of room in there. Um, so I, I wanted to reassure people about, about the safety because of how large of a facility it is and how well it's spa spaced out. And I, I've, I got vaccinated there as well and um, had a very good experience. And um, there's, it's really quite, an amazing public health effort, I would say, of all of our lifetimes, a historic public health effort. Yeah, I would agree with that, Catherine. I feel very privileged to be experiencing this with uh, people and, and joining other health organizations and other, uh, other professionals, medical health professionals. It's been it's been a joyous uh, a joyous time when people are there. They're very excited, even if they have to wait an hour. People are generally excited. They're getting the vaccine. It's it's a it's a load off. You know, it's a load off of their of their chest. Um, uh, I'm also a vaccinator. I haven't vaccinated at the convention center. I have a different role, but when I was vaccinating at Emmanuel, I had probably somewhere between 10 to 15 people that would just burst into tears of just uh, the relief of being able to get the vaccine. So uh, it's moving people in a way and, and um, but yeah, but just to piggyback on what Catherine's saying, it's very safe there. Uh, any person that you come in contact with as a healthcare professional uh, should have already been vaccinated. One of the things we're trying to do is to make sure that um, those people who are volunteering at the convention center have had their first and second dose and are past that 14 day window to make sure that they're fully covered to protect themselves and their families and to protect 
uh, the patients. The volunteers may not be vaccinated and, and we're, working, we're working to help get those people vaccinated. And volunteers would be wayfi uh, wayfinders or people who are maybe bringing people in uh, with a wheelchair and, 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 and doing things like that. But, but in general, everyone that you come in, not in general, everyone you contact with that is patient facing will have a mask on and they will have a face shield. They will have both and you will be safe and, um, and you won't have to worry about that. Yeah, thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Are you finished, Catherine? There was one other thing I wanted to mention just um, for people to know, in addition to the other sites um, that Marlon mentioned, you know, the pharmacies and the drive through at the airport. Um, in the next couple of months, there will be additional sites opening up, is my understanding. There are many people working on creating uh, more kind of dispersed community-based vaccine sites, um, all the public health departments, many community organizations and the health systems as well are working on um, really dispersing um, vaccine, but it, that really all depends on the supply chain. And once we have enough supply to really allow more community-based sites to open up, but that's one of the things I'm working on. Oh, cool. Thank you. And thank you, Catherine, for your service, as well as Dr. Marlin, for your service. We have a couple more. Um, why I wanted to pass on Allison reports that she's heard only great things from people who, who were happily vaccinated at the convention center. And so thank you. And another question is from Peggy, is the reason older adults have fewer side effects from the vaccine because they have less strong immune systems? And does that mean the vaccine will work less well with them? Um, I don't know the answer to that. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate if the, I, I would agree that, that the immune response may not prompt the side effect uh, severity. I agree with that, but I doubt very seriously if the vaccine would not work in the same way. Now, um, I think it is the Moderna vaccine. Now I'm drawing a blank. One of them over the 60, uh, the study showed 65 and older one of the vaccines dropped to 89% for 65 and older uh, between the Pfizer and the Moderna. Pranish, do you know, Pranish, I have another pharmacist on the line I shared this with. Pranish, do you know which one, if it's the Pfizer or the Moderna? But at any rate, if he jumps in or not, at any rate, if you- I don't, sorry. No problem. If you, um, I think that's, Peggy, that's the only thing I'm aware of is that there is a, a slight effectiveness in one of those two. I can get, I can make sure I have an answer tomorrow um, at church and I can put in the chat. Um, but even in that scenario, if you came to the convention center and there was just a Pfizer day, then you're still going to get that Pfizer and your 89 point whatever percent of, you know, uh, covered. All right. Thank you. Um, also, um, uh, question, are people advised to get the vaccine if they've already had COVID? Yes. Okay. And I think that was it. Um, any other questions? Um, I th oh, Judy. Yeah, Judy, go ahead. You're muted. She's muted. Unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? You we have to unmute you. yourself. Okay, there we go. okay. <laughs> okay, hold down. Everyone, hold down. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> it wasn't letting me at first. Gotcha. Yeah, right, right. Okay. I just wanted to say um, that we're blessed to have someone like Marlon in our oh. congregation, and that is a professional.
pharmacists that can tell us in detail about the um, vaccines and Catherine as well. But um, I don't know that everyone has the same in-depth information because as we've already said, a lot of people are just, you know, have nervous breakdowns to get to the, you know, to the convention center or wherever to get their vaccines because they think then, you know, I don't have to worry about anything. And what Arlen has told us today, and I've heard this before as well, this is not a cure-all. You know, it protects people, but it's important for as many people as possible to get it. And yeah. there's still work out there to be done on, on advocating, you know, for getting people um, to accept it. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you because um, it's a blessing to us to have you. Thank you. And then the next thing I wanted to do, just want to clarify, um, this procedure is for Oregonians, correct? Correct, yes ma'am. So I can't jump from Washington State and come across the bridge to uh, get my shot. I just wanted to be sure that was- That's correct. Now here I is- I understand. Here is the tip and tricks of the trade. So. Um, one of the things that if, if people wanted to get ahead of the line, the one thing you want to do is you want to volunteer your time at one of the sites. So here's why. If you volunteer at one of the sites and at the end of the day, there are extra doses, we are not, we are not, we are not going to throw anything away. We're going to get that vaccine in someone's arm. So for the Oregon Convention Center, the process is our first come first, our first list of people that get extra doses are our volunteers. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's volunteered at the site, they will get a vaccine if we have extra doses. Uh, we, they will get it. It doesn't matter whether they're Oregonians, Washingtonians, mm -hmm. is it Idahoians? I don't even know what it is, but it doesn't matter where you're from. If you volunteered, and we have extra, you're first on the list. Uh, so for those who, and I've shared this with a lot of young people, uh, especially uh, some of my pharmacy students uh, who have been essentially doing their rotations at home because of their virtual learning situation, that this is an opportunity for you to really, you know, step up your community kind of um, community care project, something you can talk about in residency interviews and you can say, hey, I volunteered at the vaccination clinic at uh, the Oregon Convention Center. And then this 25 year old who should not get the vaccine probably until May, June, July, if we have extra, they will get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. So yes, Judy, you're not supposed to cross lines, but if you come and you volunteer at the Oregon Convention Center and you're working a late shift and we have extra, and you want to be on the list and we and 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 there's enough to go around you will get it how do people become volunteers uh, i think you go to the uh that website the the one for oregon or i forget the name of it now you you can you can go there or you can you can message me or you can mess i'm sure Catherine can also hook you up with um one of the logistics people who can get you on a list to volunteer. We need lots of volunteers, lots of volunteers. I have a question. Hi, Hi Carolyn. Yes, hello. Listen, you, you talked about driving there, but what about people that take public transportation? Uh, where do they enter the convention center? Sure. What will happen is you'll, if, if you're, the max runs right there, you know, by the convention center, they will, they won't let you in at the very beginning, but you will have to go essentially to the end of the building so that you can enter in uh, near the registration area. So that essentially is you would walk down MLK mm -hmm. and you would be, you would be allowed to enter near that Northeast Lloyd entrance. You will not have to go around the building to go through the parking lot, okay. but you, but you have to go to the end of the building because that's where the line begins, where you get your paperwork, okay. you get pre-screened and all of those things. So they'll let you in. Uh, you do not have to enter in through the parking lot. Okay. Do you know anything else? Uh, do you know anything different, Catherine? 
Around the transportation or the volunteering? Uh, yeah. About getting in the building if you're not coming through the parking lot. I think that was Carolyn's question. Yeah. Yes, you can. Um, yes, you can enter from the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard side, but as Marlon said, it is the south side of the building, so kind of the door is furthest from the max line oh, okay. um, on MLK. You can enter that way. Yeah. Okay, so you can't enter through like the main entrance where you would go in, say, for events or anything like that. It has to be the other one that's south of there. Is that right? Yeah. It has to be the south doors. Yeah, the one like the doors closest to the max line are actually yeah. where the staff check-in entrance is and only staff with badges from the health systems can enter there. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Okay, well, thank you very much, Marlon and Catherine both. And uh, thank you for your slides and all your information and everybody for participating. We are very grateful for your help and interest. Thank you. And as Thank you. information comes up, we will share it as we're able. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. You. Adios. Hi. Thank you again. You're welcome.